guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath Holland, and this is our latest stack of new releases. Full disclosure, this is take three. I just keep getting a little hot and going like, ah, stop it, start over. Um, normally, wh why am I getting hot? Because I keep talking about 4Ks and I get I get sidetracked on bad 4K criticism. And it's probably going to happen here too, so stay tuned. I've been doing all my new release covers live for the, the this whole year so far. Um, that's not a possibility for me right now. This stuff is coming in faster than I can get to as far as like, you know, like setting aside 90 minutes for a live stream. I'm preparing for two audio commentaries that haven't been announced yet, so I can't tell you what they are. But when they have been announced, I'll talk to you about them. And I've also been summoned for jury duty. Okay, so that's a huge suck on my time. So I just got to get this out, right? These new, I'd be like, you got to know about these new releases. You got to know what I think about them. So let's just get into it. We got five 4Ks here. I think we've got 16 titles total. It's a really solid haul. Um, but I'm going to kick it off with Footloose. Footloose on 4K. This is the Steelbook version. This is from Paramount. And I love this Steelbook. Um, look, I'm not going to bury the lead here. I love this movie. I love this Steelbook. I love this transfer. For, like, okay, love is overstating it. But I've, as soon as this hit my mailbox, I started seeing people going like, oh, it's a mess. It's not a mess. This is the best Footloose. I say I'm already hot again. This is the best Footloose has ever looked on home media. It's a grainy transfer. Grain turns people off. But my goodness, you don't, please studios, do not listen to these people that want DNR'd 4Ks. There's a, there's more of us that love grain than love DNR. DNR does not belong on a 4K. And we see, what, what happens is a lot of studios are doing that. They, they meet you in the middle. They're like, we'll use some DNR. I had a guy that works with studios tell me we take out all the grain and then we put it back artificially. No, sir. Uh, and that's not what this is. This is very clearly the original film grain. So it's chunky grain. Like you see an outdoor scene, you're like, oh, that's grain. It's going to turn some people off, but that's what this movie looks like on film. Uh, it also has a fairly drab color palette. So while it does have all the HDR bells and whistles, it's not like a roll of lifesavers. You know, and I guess maybe packaging like this kind of sets up certain expectations. The movie takes place, you know, in like mud brown, a mud brown town. You know, that's the whole idea is that the only escape for these people is the dancing, the dancing. Uh, so let's let's talk about the steelbook for a second, because it's gorgeous. Looks like a Walkman. And uh, they've carried over a lot of cool, like tape related um, imagery here. We do have a mini poster. It also comes with a digital. Did I full this? Like I own, I bought this movie digitally. I, I saw this movie first digitally on 4k. As soon as it was released on 4k digitally, I bought it. And so having this on a, and I was happy with it. And so now having a disc, I'm like, well, this is even better because there's none of the compression associated with the digital stream. Not that there's a ton, most of the time, the, the naked eye on a, on like a 65 inch TV. We talk too much about this stuff. And this is one of the things that kind of gets under my skin is that people talk about this stuff like it's, uh, I, you know, I, I just think there's a lot of people reviewing 4Ks that don't know a lot about film. You know, they want everything to look like a video game, 60 frames per second, you know, I, like that's not what film is. Film is imperfect and that's why we love it. I love this mini poster here, preserving the original artwork. Uh, I... Do I go for a take four? No. This is the best Footloose has ever looked on home media. I'm very happy with it. Uh, I don't really know what could have been done differently except to take out some of the grain, which I'm glad they didn't do. Because we've seen it before, right? Like Paramount has been very hit or miss over the years with their 4K transfers. Saturday Night Fever, very important movie. Um, looks waxy in some scenes. And in other scenes, it's such a revisionist color palette that, uh, well, I should say the Blu-ray is revisionist. The Blu-ray is like, it's that lifesavers thing, right? It's just like reds and greens and whatever. Uh, and the 4K kind of pulls a lot of that out and people complained about that. They're like, it's been muted down. The cut, like you cannot make everybody happy. And I'm lose, I'm rapidly losing interest in trying to have these conversations about how 4K should look. Uh, I think the 4K should reflect how the movie looks on 35 millimeter when it was first made, if it's if it's sourced from 35 millimeter. You know, I talked to William Lustig about it, Bill Lustig from Blue Underground, who's also a director, put out a lot of his own movies on 4K. I got to talk to him. I was like, what do you want from a 4K? He's like, I want my 4K to, I'm paraphrasing. You can go check out the interview yourself. He's like, I want my 4Ks to look like the movie 
when I was just done, when I had my first print struck, you know, and it was brand new. That's what I want my, and, and that's, that's what we're getting with a lot of this stuff. And Paramount's been listening. Let's be honest. They've been listening because this is a huge step up. Uh, is this, who is this from? This is, um, uh, oh, this is, this is not associated with a studio, is it? This is, uh, the new, we got four, four Kino, three, four. We got four new 4Ks from Kino Lorber. This was a, a January title that I did not have yet at the time of my complete Kino Lorber coverage. And there, listen, I got a lot of Kino stuff waiting to talk to you guys about it later in February. We're just going to talk about these four 4Ks for right now because, you know, I, I, I want to give you. I want to keep you up to speed on these. I also want to tease you for what's coming later in February, right? So Scarlet Street, Fritz Lang, um, who is honestly one of the greats. And uh, it's uh, Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, Dan Dur... Durie, Dur oh, I can't... I'm in my own head now. Durie. Dan Durie. I always call him Dan Durea. And then uh, I don't... That's not right. Durie. 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 Anyway. And everybody's going to pronounce it differently, too, and think we're right. Um, Scarlet Street is a great, a great little film noir that I believe has been in the public domain for a while, for a long time. Uh, this is a brand new HDR Dolby Vision Master from a 16-bit 4K scan of the 35mm nitrate composite fine grain. That's a lot of words there, but uh, it comes courtesy of Universal Pictures. Okay, so Universal's involved with this. Who's got a pretty... I've been really happy with Universal stuff lately. Uh, barring, you know, a few exceptions, but again, there's never like everything's great or everything's horrible. There's always nuance because of like who's involved with it. If you've got like James Cameron or if you've got George Lucas involved with the restoration, they're going to do what they want to do. Anyway, Universal Pictures and UCLA. Uh, we got audio commentary by Imogen Sarah Smith and an audio commentary by David Calat, Calais, uh, author of The Strange Case of Dr. Mabius. This is a wonderful film, and it has never looked better. Again, it has never looked better on home media. I cannot believe the restoration here. Uh, seeing black and white movies on 4K is a real thrill. A, a real thrill for me because it brings them even further to life. And um, this is uh, this film is no exception. You know, I I'll, I was. Max Allen Collins. So you saw my video of Max Allen Collins. Hopefully you did. Uh, if they, some of you guys have yet to discover that. Maybe you're waiting for a weekend or something. But uh, I talked to Max Allen Collins about the latest film noir box set, which was 16, 17. Should be out in time for my complete February Kino Lorber video. Uh, but he was talking about this release in, uh, in, in, like an, in an email after that video. He was like, you know, I watched Scarlet Street. <clears throat> and he um, started talking to me about Fritz Lang. And I was like, whoa. So like the insight there, maybe I'll be able to bring some of that to you guys. Cause we're going to talk about this again, uh, later in the month when I do my complete Kino Lover spotlight. But for now, Scarlet Street's out. It looks gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. Gunfight at the OK Corral. Another one. Is this, uh, who is this? This is Paramount. All right. So it's another Paramount transfer and I'm very happy with it. I'm telling you guys, these movies have never looked so good. Are they perfect? No, but nothing. Literally nothing is perfect. If you get something sourced from 35 millimeter, it's going to have all the imperfections of film, right? It's going to have nuance. It's going to have, uh, you know, there's going to be things that might be out of focus a little bit. There's going to be things that um, may have a little bit of a distortion. It's never going to be perfect, but you know what? Neither is anything that's shot digitally because you're going to have, you know, digital comes with a whole other set of problems. So, um, Again, I'm just getting really bored having these conversations because I say the same things over and over. And it doesn't matter what I say. Anytime a new release is announced, what do people ask? Yes, I'm wearing my Wino 4K shirt because this shirt is never far from me. We just keep having the exact same conversations over and over and over and over and over again. And there's people that are reviewing discs that know nothing about film. They know nothing about 4K. And they're just like, why is this not the best looking thing I've ever seen in my life? Uh, Gunfight of the OK Corral, fantastic film. Burt Lancaster, Kirk Douglas, you're not going to beat that cast in a what? Well, well Vera Cruz is a pretty good cast. Anyway, there's a lot of good 50s Western casts out there. But this is these are two of the two guys at the top of their game. Um, so this is 1957. It's got all the stuff that we want from a 50s Western with the the noir influence, the influence of World War II. Uh, we got a new commentary here, audio commentary by C. Courtney Joyner and uh, Henry Park from True West Magazine. They do great work together. 
Uh, I don't think we had an, yeah, there's no alternate artwork for this one. Um, <clears throat> but the, I, the, again, the movies never look so good. Never. Leviathan, the movie a lot of you guys love and probably know from the VHS days. Well, you're going to love it on 4K because this is another really solid transfer. This comes from MGM. Uh, and they're doing pretty good stuff with their 4Ks too, in my opinion. This is a, uh, a, a lot of this stuff's re-releases. Let's be honest. So a lot of these movies have been put out on Blu-ray before by Kino Lorber, by somebody else. Uh, Leviathan is a, what is this, 80, 1989. Kind of in the abyss territory, right? <clears throat> kind of um, a, a spiritual brethren to the abyss. It's like an undersea, hey, there's something under the water, that kind of a movie. And it's got, it's kind of good cast. It's got Peter Weller, who was Robocop, Richard Crenna, uh, from, they say from First Blood, uh, special effects by Stan Winston. Um, it's, it's good. I like it. But the, the most important conversation here is like, how does it look on 4K? It looks really, really good. They've done well. I like to see the grain and it's here. You know, I like to see, um, a, a good, I just want to feel like it was done respectfully and not on someone's lunch hour. And I got that from this. Uh, it's a brand new HDR Dolby Vision Master from a 4K scan of the 35 millimeter interpositive. The last 4K we're going to talk about is The Last Castle. Sort of, again, another movie that Kino Lover has already put out, but it's Robert Redford. It's uh, James Gandolfini, um, Mark Ruffalo, Delroy Lindo. This was um, sort of... The like the elevator pitch for this for you guys is like okay so it's like the fugitive meets Cool Hand Luke meets Lock Up <laughs> with Stallone right like uh, Robert Redford is uh, convicted of a crime and thrown into prison but we're on his side because he didn't do it right and then um, he basically finds out that there's bad stuff going on in this prison and he can stop it right so. That's that's the movie, and it's sort of an action movie. I mean, it is an action movie, but it's also kind of a drama and kind of a thriller. Uh, looks good. Again, it's not a reference disc because it's a very drab transfer, but it looks good on 4K. It, it brings forward all of that filmic uh, that that filmic character that 4K allows us to do. Uh, because it's a 2001 film as well. We are very late. I mean, this is really when film started to switch over to digital. After George Lucas with The Phantom Menace was like, well, you're going to put digital projectors in all your theaters. Um, where This is kind of ending an era, really. It's not quite the end of the era, but it's getting there. Uh, it looks good. Uh, there's not a whole lot else to say. Does this have... Yeah, we got alternate artwork for this one too. We'll be talking about it again in a couple of weeks, in a few weeks. Stay tuned. Uh, I should also mention every video that I do has a link in the description of that video with a link to Amazon. So if you buy these through that Amazon link, it supports me, supports this coverage. And really, I would appreciate it if you used it. Because if you're going to use Amazon, go through my link. You don't have to buy just these titles. You can buy anything through Amazon. And uh, I get a small percentage of that. And it's one way you can support the channel without having to sign up for Patreon or YouTube memberships. But if you want to do those too, I very much appreciate it because I do serve up uh, like one exclusive video every single week. And there's a smaller community built around that. The Abbott and Costello Show Season 2. You guys, I would have sworn that I talked about this uh, like six weeks ago in a live stream, but I can't find it. And uh, when the release date for this hit about a week ago, I was like, well, I already covered this, didn't I? And I went to find it. I couldn't find it anywhere. So I might be talking about this for the first time. Uh, I certainly talked about the uh, first season. So uh, the 3D Film Archive did the restoration for this. I backed this on Kickstarter. I backed this project. I funded this project because I really believe in it. And uh, Classic Flicks has put out the disc. So the, people said this could never be done, right? The Abbott Costello show sort of in, uh, sort of in a, a, a limbo for many, many years as far as quality. And if, you know, what we had was watchable, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm in the era. Yeah. I just bought a bunch of alpha DVDs, right? I mean, I'm the guy who's like, I'll take it however I can get it most of the time. But a lot of the stuff from the 1930s, 40s, 50s, even 60s, it really only exists in, you know, like 16 millimeter sourced, uh, transfers that were then on tape and that was sold to televisions or sent out to television is a TV masters from 16 millimeter, which isn't ideal. You know, I mean, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. So this, a, a true restoration from the film source 
is uh, from the 35 millimeter Master Elements by the 3D Film Archive in collaboration with the Library of Congress and Classic Flicks. I mean, it is like, it, it almost gives me goosebumps. And I, some people are like, what are you talking about? If you, maybe you get it. You know, when I talk about a movie like Scarlet Street and when I talk about Footloose, like I want to see how this looked when it was new, you know? And the, the film grain on this, I'm talking about film grain again. This episode is sponsored by Film Grain. It just, it takes me to a time I never lived through. It takes me back to, what year was this? This was 1953 to 1954. It takes me back there and it makes it so alive. Uh, this has never looked better. I don't think this ever could look better. I think this is the pinnacle of restoration. It's breathtaking. And what's cool about season two of the Abbott and Costello show, season one was kind of like, um, it's a lot of bits. You know, kind of like that. Hey, who's up first? You know, like very bits, you know. I believe they even describe it as like, you know, burlesque house bits. Yeah, vintage burlesque bits. It's, you know, it's like from their act. You know, they, they would incorporate pieces of their act into the show. This is more of a traditional sitcom approach. And so if you're an Abbott Costello fan, this is like the closest they ever got to like, you know, the traditional sitcom. Uh, as seen by, you know, like I Love Lucy or what are some other early, fa- The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. That's another one that's very traditional in its approach. Um, just really great stuff. And it's loaded up. We got an audio, audio commentaries by Stu Fink and Ron Palumbo. We got bonus content reel featuring uh, Vacation, Real One without the audience, season edited, uh, season one edited scene of Restoration. I'm, I'm kind of slurring because I'm trying to read this really fast. And as I was reading all these extras, I realized I didn't show you the back of the box for the 4Ks. So you don't know what the extras are for those either. I, was, I, read, I read some of it, but um, this is fantastic. So please do, if you're interested in this, companies like Classic Flix and, uh, and even the 3D Film Archive, they need support. You know, I see all the time, like, why doesn't so-and-so release this old thing? And then so-and-so does release this whole thing. And the person that says that's like, I'll wait for clearance. I'm like, okay, you killed it. You asked for this thing and then you didn't support this thing and you've killed it. Like you've cost that company money. Uh, I know classic, like these companies are working on very thin margins, right? And they need, like, if you're interested, now's the time. You you savvy, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, Let's go back to this really quick. So the Ice Castle had uh, audio, here, hold this up. It's got some good stuff on there. And uh, did I do Leviathan? I don't remember if I did Leviathan or not. No, I don't think I did. Okay, we've done that, right? So put put those in a stack there. Uh, love that stuff. And, and because I'm so history focused, um, I get especially jonesed about, like I get really excited about that stuff. And people are like, I, so I won't say who it was. Somebody emailed me the other day and they were like, I saw your inter- your video about the Little Rascals, which you can't see. It's just out of frame over here. They were like, I saw your video about the Little Rascals. And you were like, you were really, you were talking about like how it brings history to life. And I was like, yeah, because it does. So like if your focus is history and history lives on a page, you know, when it jumps off the page and becomes real, when you can see somebody eating a sandwich and you can see the texture of the bread and like that meat looks kind of dry. When you see how like the details come to life, it brings history alive. Uh, I think we just passed the 110th anniversary of Charlie Chaplin's first appearance as the, the tramp character from 1914 in a, a day at the kid races, I think is the title of that short I think that's where I started with Charlie Chaplin. Cause like, I don't know, 15 years ago, I was like, I gotta, I want to do the work on, uh, on Chaplin as I reach for my Chaplin box set here. Well, I got three of these, three of these box sets. This was what I started with these. Uh, this is the, the, uh, the SNA and the mutual shorts. Anyway, it's 110 years ago. Right. But what I, what I, and I didn't love silent movies, but I wasn't like, Oh, I love silent. Like I wasn't, I was much younger. First of all, um, when I watched this, Chaplin short I was like this is hilarious this could happen now like his reactions his faces all like when you realize that we are no different today than we were over 100 years ago it opens this stuff up for you and there's no way to do that better than these restorations so when people go like "Ah, it's pretty grainy I'm like you've missed everything you've missed the whole point of the thing in the first place which is to watch it and enjoy it this is a gateway to an experience right it's the thing I keep talking about 
these Blu-rays and these 4Ks are a ticket to ride. Take the ride. Don't just look at the ticket the whole time. Go on the ride. Because if you don't, you've missed it. Do you imagine going to a carnival and just looking at your phone the whole time? Like, look at what's all around us. Woo! All right. Did I just peek the microphone? I probably just blew the microphone out. Have to edit that out. Uh, we got two new Radiance titles. Two new Radiance titles. Uh, I don't even mess with the numbers anymore because I think I'm so far out. Oh, well, these are 37 and 38. These are consecutive. All right, so let's go with 37 first. This is uh, the world Blu-ray premiere of The Sting of Death. In the aftermath of World War II, a writer's love affair drives, her, drives his wife mad with distrust, realizing his errors. He tries to save her from literally losing her mind. Uh, I, I struggle with pronunciations. I'm going to try here. It's Kohei Uguri's haunting film is shot in hyperreal uh, style that's equal parts uh, painterly and unflinching. So anyway, Radiance loves these uh, movies that a lot of us have never heard of. And for me, who's, you know, you know ex discovering for the first time, really, you know, like, this is not something that I ever had access to. In my, we were always limited by what the video store had back in the day. And uh, I don't think my video store had anything like this. They were, you know, it was like copies of Navy SEALs, <laughs> you know. And uh, I remember Flashback. It was the movie called Flashback with Kiefer Sutherland and um, Dennis Hopper, where he's like the burnout and Kiefer Sutherland was like the straight-laced cop that has to bring him in. I remember that VHS. I remember being very attracted to that VHS tape in like 90 or 91, whenever that movie was. Uh, so this is 1990. We got a ton of stuff. Did I hold it? I held this up for you guys, right? So you can read all those special features. Uh, Radiance really, really pulls out all the stops for their releases. They are one of the, um, it's elevated film. You know, this is not necessarily pop, pop consumer stuff. This is really elevated look at film, but I'm here for it. You know, this is, uh, we need stuff like this. We need we need people preserving these films. This one especially because I'm I'm digging even deeper into Italian films. This is a Damio, Damiano Damiani film uh, from 1970. What is the year on the 77? Yeah, 1977. Uh, this is Goodbye and Amen. And um, how, let's see how do they describe it? A CIA agent. Uh, preparing to overthrow an African government has his plan upturned when a corrupt colleague starts shooting people from the roof of a hotel. Damiano Damiani wills expert attention in this gripping espionage thriller co-starring Claudia Cardinal, John Steiner, and Wolfgang Soldati. Um, <clears throat> it's one of the great 1970s Italian action thrill rides. It's a new 2023 restoration, new, uh, blue, new restoration Blu-ray premiere. So that tells us it's been on Blu-ray before. I'm not sure from who, but this is the new restoration premiere. Uh, looks like we got a couple of different cuts here. We got the Italian version and... Uh, the export, the, the English export cut. That's cool. Who wrote the um, the booklet notes? This is Italian crime cinema expert Lucia Rinaldi. <clears throat> who I believe pops up on a lot of stuff, right? If it's who I'm thinking of. Let me show you some of the... So those are two new Radiance titles. Oh, we got reversible artwork here too. Sorry, guys. And I bet we do for uh, that other film as well. Let me... Oh, I didn't put the... Hold on. I didn't put the uh, the Obi strip in properly. No, 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 we do, we do. Here. All right. Arrow. All right, let's kick it off with another martial arts film, The Shaolin Plot. I have kind of thrown up my hands and trying to keep these separated in my head because I've watched so many in the last couple of years. I could not tell you which was which. They've all blended together in sort of like a, I mean, you think about it. And I, I haven't even delved into a lot of the stuff that's come out. Uh, I've done the stuff from Arrow and I've done the stuff from 88. I've watched some movies from 88 films. And there's a lot of stuff that Shell Factory put out that I didn't even buy because I can't even keep up with this stuff anymore. But uh, I, it all just kind of starts to blend in together after a while. So I admire anyone that knows these films intimately and can keep them separated. It's a good problem to have. Here, it's another Sammo Hung movie, which I, my, I'm well documented on Sammo Hung. Like I don't, I don't get it. 
the comedy approach, like when he's doing serious stuff, I really enjoy it, but that's so rare. He always was like the clown, the, the martial arts clown, the kung fu clown, if you will. Um, of course, not meant to disparage anybody else on their feelings about Sammo Hung, and maybe I just maybe it hasn't clicked yet. You know, I, my friend Pastor Bromley from F This Movie dot uh, dot net is a Chicago film critic. I wrote for F This Movie for five years. I was uh, doing podcasts with him since 2013. Good friend. He was always struggling with Giallo. He had a regular column called "There's Always Room for Giallo," and he still does. And uh, you go to fthismovie.net, you can read those. <clears throat> and you can read hundreds of my stuff, my columns there too. But he was always chasing it, right? It's not clicking for me. I don't get it yet. One day, it all clicked for him. And now he's like a super huge Jalo enthusiast, kind of an expert on this stuff. It really clicked for him. So I'm kind of hoping that one of these days, this all clicks for me. And I go, I get it. I understand. It might not happen until after this the floodgates start to die down a little bit because really it's just, it's just, there's so much. I don't know that we're, well, I talked to, who did I talk to? It was, I think it was my interview with Matt Patterson, formerly of Warner archive. I was like, we're not meant to, uh, to watch like a hundred movies a month. I, I just don't think the brain can handle all that. We're probably also not meant for social media either. Having access to the, the internet, having access to everything everywhere, whenever we want it. I don't know that our brains know how to process all this stuff, but Maybe it's just me. Maybe you do. Maybe you're like, oh, no, what are you talking about? And, you know, also not everything is for everybody, which is important to point out to you. Uh, I have not checked this out yet. I do look forward to checking it out because I always have a good time. Even if I don't like, you know, if I don't love something, I do have a good time with it. 2K Restoration from the original Fortune, uh, the original elements from Fortune Star. We've got... Uh, Mandarin and English mono options. We've got a commentary by Frank Jang and Michael Wirth. I love Frank Jang's commentaries. Commentary by action cinema experts Mike Leader and Arn Venema. See, these guys are in the UK, and I gather the UK had a lot more access to this stuff than we might have in the US. I also observed the same thing about Australia. Australia and Asian cinema, because of their proximity, perhaps, I don't know, they can have access to a lot of things that never, like maybe we got it at a festival. But we didn't get a DVD, we didn't get a Blu-ray, you know. But these people know these movies from the VHS days. You once you get it, it just depends on what you had access to. Uh, Ultra English credits, uh, double-sided fold-out poster, which I'm going to show you guys in a minute. Well, I'll show you now. How about that? So it's just going to be the the two pieces of art. Somebody emailed me today about posters. They were like, "What are the dimensions of the posters?" I was like, "Well, everybody's poster is a little bit different. These arrow posters have like." nine panels whereas you just saw the footloose poster was four panels you know folded into four sides basically is what i'm talking about you know what i mean right three six nine you know um mvd's posters are um four four panels four folds you know what i'm trying to say All right, we got another Arrow title here, which is a movie I haven't seen. Fear is the Key. So this is, uh, what is the year on this? Hold on, guys. This is 1972. It's a Paramount Pictures presents Kastner Lad Kantner production. Barry Newman, Susie Kendall, and Alistair McLean's Fear is the Key. Also starring John Vernon. Um, never seen it. It was my alley. 1972, based on Alistair McLean. That's cool. I've picked up some Alistair McLean books at uh, at a thrift store recently. They were, I think they were, a, I was maybe they were two bucks. I think they were two bucks, which was a little steep for a used paperback for me. But I was like, these are like vintage 19 late 50s, early 60s Alistair McLean paperbacks. I'll take them. Um, for best-selling author Alistair McLean, The Guns of Navarone and Where Eagles Dare. Comes a pulse pounding, rip roaring rampage of revenge, starring Barry Newman, the king of ex existential cool, who had previously put the pedal to the metal in Vanishing Point, which is great. If you've never seen Vanishing Point, great movie. And follow Vanishing Point with something that is um, related but different. I would say follow up Vanishing Point with Tulane Blacktop, which is more existential. Dennis Wilson, well, James, is it James Taylor and Dennis Wilson, if memory serves? Um, it's a very, a very different kind of movie, but it's this like the road, you know, and, uh, also in, um, Warren Oates is in, uh, uh, Tulane Blacktop as well. Uh, 
Okay, I'm not going to read the back of this to you, but I will let you read the back of it. This is something we can do since we're not live streaming and limited to 720p. You get it in full 4K. Oh, hold on a second. So I know this art. I have, do I, somebody, maybe I have seen this. Oh, this is looking familiar. I think maybe I have seen this. This is the problem. See previous notes about we weren't made to watch 100 movies a month or more. Um, when you watch three, four, you know, there have been days when I'll do six movies in a day. It's not often, but there have been days when I'll do five or six movies in a day. It doesn't really stick, you know. When you do that, you're kind of, um, you're riding the lightning. <laughs> anyway, so this looks really cool, and we've got a uh, the double-sided poster here with the new art, and this art. I held it up for you so you saw the special features, right? What's our Metallo? I've got my, I got the Spaghetti Western sets right here, by the way. Was it Metallo in, is that in volume one? Hold on. No, it's not in those either. Okay. It's around there somewhere. All right. On a similar note, the Swiss conspiracy, this is coming from uh, uh, Film Masters, who is just continuing to be one of my favorite labels because they're taking movies that have not been given the treatment that they deserve over the years and giving them that treatment. So uh, someone said, I don't remember who said it. I'm sorry. I can't credit you, but they said they give lavish treatment to movies that don't always deserve it. I'm like, that's probably true. I just, I, every movie deserves it, I guess. Um, I just, I love the, the, I love what they do. See my interview with the, the founder of film masters, and uh, a lot of people that I know and respect are associated with the special features on these. So see Courtney Joyner. You know, so Ballyhoo contributes a ton of documentary footage, you know, features to these. And uh, often with see Courtney Joyner, they're both friends of Serial at Midnight and have been on the channel multiple times. Uh, this is a new audio commentary by Robert Kelly, who I just did an audio commentary with for a movie that this is a third audio commentary reference in this video. For a movie I can't tell you about yet because it hasn't been announced, but it was with Robert Kelly and someone else. Uh, and he's with uh, Daniel Budnick on this too. A three-dimensional filmmaker. Oh, I should, tell you, I should tell you what this is. So it's David Jansen. Uh, dirty money and dirty secrets surround the Swiss conspiracy, a thrilling tale of corruption in the Swiss Alps when five clients of an elite Swiss bank, entities known for their security and privacy, are blackmailed security consultant and former U.S. DO of off official David Christopher, David Jansen, is brought in. Uh, love, intrigue, and a whodunit mystery are set against the Swiss Alps in this production entirely filmed in and around Zurich. Cast includes John Ireland, John Saxon, oh, I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. Anyway, why did I do that? That's the ADD. The ADHD. Uh, Ray Milland, Cinta Berger, Berger, and Elke Summer. Uh, legendary director Jack Arnold, who I love, Creature from the Black Lagoon. He did a lot of stuff. I mean, look, I'm not going to go off on Jack Arnold's career, but I love Jack Arnold. He was the Brady Bunch's favorite director. Um, along with noted German cinematographer W.P. Hassenstein and Klaus Doldinger from Das Boot and The Neverending Story, provide a stirring musical score. We got audio commentary, which I talked about. A three dimensional filmmaker that's a video essay by Will Dodson and Ryan Verrill. Um, about the film Jack Arnold, the last, I'm sorry, the lost years. It's a new featurette by Ballyhoo Motion Pictures, whom I just talked about. Liner notes in full color uh, booklet written by uh, editor in chief Lee Pfeiffer of Cinema Retro Magazine. That's a big deal. The 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 editor in chief from Cinema Retro, which is a super cool magazine, focuses on the kind of stuff that I dig. Right, this is the kind of stuff we talk a lot about. Uh, original 1976 restored trailer scanned in 4K from the 35mm archival elements and a 2024 recut trailer. You're getting the disc, you're getting the booklet. Let's take a quick scan through this. Everything these guys do is just high quality and somehow they manage to do it once a month. I don't even know how 
they're able to turn this stuff around this quickly. I don't even like how does Daniel Griffith do a documentary? Because I mean, it's not he's not only working on these. How is he putting out a documentary? I mean, they're not full length, but you know, 20, 30 minutes. How is he doing that every single month? Oh, we gotta talk about joysticks. We gotta talk about joysticks. So this was supposed to be released pretty much now. As you're seeing this, this is included in the new release videos. There was an audio issue, and I don't. I, I'm mine's still sealed. It had something to do with the audio mix being wrong and sound coming out where it wasn't supposed to come out. The good news is this was caught very early um, and it's going like it's been pulled. Okay. The new issue date for this is May. And uh, I was told to destroy my copy, which I, I will, I guess I will do that. I don't know. I might, I might keep the slip cover. I might keep the poster. But the point is they don't want this bad audio mix getting out into the wild. And I respect and appreciate that. But I can give you a first look because uh, so I'm, I'm on this release is the important thing. Like I can treat, so me, Eric Wilkinson, the, the, you know, the acquisitions guy at MVD Entertainment and Jesse Nelson from Diabolic DVD. We did a commentary for joysticks and it's fun. Um, you would like you wouldn't expect a scholarly commentary for joysticks, right? It's a fun commentary, but uh, like we had fun with. But we also just really liked the movie, and we liked the way that it transports you to another time. This was like one of the earliest video game movies. Like it's it's Porky's in an arcade, um, and for that, check out the Atari style packaging here. I mean, look at the details on this. You can actually in that commentary, which you will hear on this disc when you buy it, you will hear me and Jesse see the artwork for the first time because Eric sent it. He was like, he was like, let me show you this artwork. So he sent it to us like text and you hear that on the commentary. Use your Blu-ray player with this joysticks motion picture video disc. So like, it'd be like, use your Atari 2600 for this. One viewer, two viewers. Oh my gosh, this is still so cool. It makes me so happy. Uh, one motion picture. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, should I, should we open it? I'll, you know, let's, I'm going to open it up and then I'll destroy it. I will burn it. That's going to be hard, right? Cause we don't want to, uh, should I just destroy it right here on camera? Maybe I should. So here's clean art, right? So if you don't necessarily, I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you're like, but what? I want the clean art. I want the clean art. See, check all that out. Um, 2K scan restoration from, it's a 2015 2K scan. Um, let's see here. Audio commentary by MVD Rewind Collections, Eric D. Wilkinson, Serial at Midnight host, Heath Holland, and Diabolic DVD's Jesse Nelson. Uh, audio commentary by director Graydon Clark, interview with director Graydon Clark, Coin Slots, faux movie trailer, short written, short, uh, written and directed by Newt Wallen, and reversible artwork, collectible two-sided mini poster. Totally awesome video games oh my gosh I mean you guys but I was told to destroy it I'm still easy I'm still thinking about it. I'm like do I destroy it got this side got this side and this is the thing that sh that should not be Okay, I did not know a Blu-ray could take this much damage. What if this was the thumbnail? People, it's like the liquid metal Terminator. Wh okay, well, <laughs> I don't know how to destroy this. Uh, we'll get back to that later. Wow, Blu-rays are tougher than I thought. I mean, I knew they were pretty tough. Maybe I just set it on fire. I don't know. <sighs> um... I've only ever seen one thing shatter like that. Uh, when I was a kid... No, I was as a teenager. Um, my friend was like, "CDs are really tough. You can do whatever you want to them." See, and he tried to, and it broke and shattered into like a hundred pieces. And he was like, he was really sad. It was, uh, it was George Harrison. All things must pass. Disc one is what it was. We got a couple of movies from cheesy. What is it? Cheesy movies. I can never remember if it's cheesy flicks or cheesy movies. It's cheesy movies. Usually public domain stuff. Usually like you know, YouTube level quality. It's not usually restored. Um, 
you know this going in. You know you're not getting this great... And they're, they're like, you know, eight bucks or nine bucks or something like that. Mad Dog Killer. Um, what is the year? 1977. Helmet Burger, Marissa Mel, Richard Harrison, Sadistic Killer Nani Vital escapes, uh, sorry, Nani Vitali escapes prison with three other criminals. They set out on a spree of robbery, rape, and murder. Meanwhile, suspect, uh, meanwhile, Inspector Santini is on a manhunt for the despicable thugs. So these are, they're pressed, they're pressed discs. But again, very low quality uh, video stuff most of the time. I'm particularly interested in this because it's my it's my kind of thing. Mysteries from Beyond Earth. Uh, this is documentary. What is the message from beyond the stars which has been kept secret from our world until now? Getting to that chariot of the gods territory. Um, what is the year on this? This is uh, 1975. I just dig it. Okay. We got... Oh, crap. This should have been in the arrow section. I'm not going to... What if I just restarted filming 40 minutes into this video? By the way, can you believe we got 40, 40 minutes and counting here? Uh, this is Murphy's War. Oh, does this have a reversible... It does. Peter O'Toole. Murphy's War. Let me flip this around. There's never enough time. World War II just, it was just ending. World War Murphy is about to begin. That kind of character, Peter O'Toole from Lawrence of Arabia and the Stuntman. Ooh, the Stuntman reference. Joins forces with director Peter Yates from Bullets and the Friends of Eddie Coyle uh, in this blisteringly acerbic, wildly entertaining film about the absurdity of war. We've got a... Um, there's a, with a script from Sterling Siliphant uh, in The Heat of the Night, The Poseidon Adventure. Cinematography by uh, Dan, uh, Douglas Slocum from The Italian Job, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And supporting a supporting cast that includes Philip, Philippe Noiré and Horst Jansen, Captain Kronos, Vampire Hunter. Nice nice reference. Uh, Murphy's War is an underseen gem. We've got Lostless Mono. <laughs> Does it need to be said it's Lostless? Uh, Running Out of War, a new visual essay by David Cairns, a great adventure, an archive interview with John Glenn, assistant director John Glenn, so not that John Glenn. Here, just reading to you guys again. Dolls. Oh, it's out of frame. The era, the, uh, the enter the uh, Empire of Dreams box set, enter the video store. All right, we are down to our last release. I know very little about it, but maybe you guys can help me out. Maybe you've seen it. This is a DVD from uh, from MVD Visual. This is the Book of Hearth, uh, and it's. Uh, uh, do you guys you guys know what this is? Uh, some of you guys probably and a lot of Kevin Smith diehard fans probably know what this is. For twenty years, conceptual artist David Greg uh, David Gar David Greg Hearth. My goodness. Uh, carried a Bible with him every single day, seeking signatures from the most culturally significant people in this in, in the world. Um, filmmaker Peter Juliet follows the artist during this his final year of the absurd quest, trailing him to scenes of forensic celebrity worship. I like like that. As hard to uh, secure signatures behind stage doors and streets and on the fringes of the red carpet, Juliet cops spontaneous interviews with previous signees from Noam Chomsky to Kevin Smith. Uh, as the last hours of his magnum opus draw to a close, Hearth struggles to reconcile with the project's meanings with its personal cost. It sounds really good. And, you know, if anybody's like, why no 4K? Come on. Uh, all right, so that is February part one. We'll probably be doing another one of these in just a few days. Uh, it's coming in hot. Coming in hot. But... I would love to know what you think about some of the movies. Let us never let the delivery system, let us never let the ticket to ride become the experience. Let it be the gateway to the experience. That's my message. That's my theme. Like disc, people want to put you in a box. You know, they want to go, ah, the Heath is the physical media guy. No, because I buy things digitally as well. And I stream things as well. But for movies that I really love and for cinema history, there is really no substitute for, you know, um, 
a, a 4K transfer with commentaries and the behind the scenes features. Uh, everything has a place. Uh, and so I want to make that very clear that we love movies, right? Movies and TV shows and stories and comics and books. How we get them is less important to me than getting them in the first place and talking about them and sharing that, that joy, right? Movies, this is entertainment. This should make us happy. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys. Please do remember to subscribe, give us thumbs ups, give, uh, give us, give me thumbs ups. You know, those do help. Subscribing helps because it keeps, it, it makes sure that you're seeing the videos that you're supposed to see when I put them up, not like a year later. I mean, I can really tell like right now the algorithm is pushing me away. I can tell like it was welcoming me in during the holiday season right now. It's like, Oh, we put up a video. We won't tell anybody. How about that? Um, it's frustrating. You work really hard on something. You spend like eight, 10, 12 hours on an interview and then people don't know you put it up. That's why I subscribe. I mentioned Patreon. I mentioned YouTube memberships, anything you can do to support this channel, even using my links. It really matters. It really helps a lot. Uh, as the plane flies overhead, I'm going to say farewell guys. Take care until next time. I will catch you later.